transaction processing system it will be able to manage the large database with a concurrent usage of that database with a n number of user so in order to have a concurrent control it's a duty of this dbms also to maintain a consistency in the content of a database so when we have a list or a series of action of reading writing aborting and committing of a content on the database from a set of transaction then we can call that as a schedule hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome to the first session of your unit 4 and we are in the bcs fourth semester subject called database management system in short it is dbms i am rohini ts department of computer science vidya from first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru so in our today's session we'll going to see about the transaction processing already we know about this transaction already which we have learned in the unit 2 so along with that topics we also have some other topics which is related to this transaction processing we'll see about this transaction processing system and also we'll see about the characteristics of the database or we'll see uh, that as a asset properties we'll see about each characteristics independently along with that we'll discuss about this transaction stage and also i will be discussing regarding what you mean by scheduling here or what is schedules and what are the types of schedules we have along with the example that i will be discussing in my today's session let me get into the first topic that is regarding transaction processing or a transaction processing system so why management of the transaction is required why we need to process the transaction so here is answer with that transaction processing system are the system with large databases we have large database here that in the terms it is what dealing with a n number of records are a table and it will going to be used by multiple number of user that is what it meant large number of database and hundred of concurrent users so uh, we are not creating any of the data for the usage of a single user it needs to be of multiple user at the same time then that is what we are mentioning that as a concurrent user that are executing the database transaction so when i am managing this transaction processing system it will be able to manage the large database with a concurrent usage of that database with a n number of user then where we can see this kind of uh, transaction processing system here we have a example that is reservation system it can be what uh, uh, train reservation or booking of uh, seats in a um, train or in the bus or even uh, when you wanted to book a movie ticket so that is what book my show app you are all using so that is also one of the example here and also banking system there also we have a connected to the large number of databases and the number of users will be more and the concurrent usage will going to happen single user will not going to be used in between 2 to 3 pm and another user will not going to be used by 3 to 4 pm so at the time at the particular time the concurrent usage of that application will going to be huge so if you are managing that then we are calling that as a transaction processing system we have a system that is processing the transaction that is what are the set of serial action that is taking place over the online with the help of this database and concurrent usage of that application then we can have it so here they require high availability and fast response time for the hundred of concurrent user if all the users are trying to access a content from the database then we are calling that as a concurrent users right so if it is concurrent users then it needs to be very fast enough in order to give the resultant that is what here fast response time must be there when we have a less response time then the availability will be high if it is take much uh, response time then the availability will be less so it has to be high available and it needs to take less response time less response time specify high availability high response time specifies low availability so that we need to remember that so here transaction is an execution of a user program what do you mean by transaction then they are executing a user program they are satisfying the requirements of a customer they are fetching the content from the database along with that the dbms as a series or list or 
of the action that can be read and write operation whether we are uh, we may reading the content from the database or we are writing a content to the database it can be any set or serial of actions so that series of actions or a set of action can be considered as what transaction in a database and also for example for the performance reason DBMS has to interleave the instructions of several transaction. For example, I have three transaction consider T1, T2 and T3. So this T1 is going to take 10 minutes, this T2 is going to take 2 minutes and this T3 will going to take 5 minutes. So here you can see that once the transaction 1 is over, then transaction 2 needs to come up. But it is taking only 2 minutes, but it has to wait the 10 minutes prior hour in order to uh, accomplish its task. So here the performance reason in order to improve the performance of accessing of a content in the database or to improve the performance of this transaction processing system, DBMS has to interleave or mix the instruction of several transactions. So parallelly it has to work with the T1 as well as to the T2 itself. So that the interleaving is done carefully to ensure that a result of concurrent execution instead of waiting for the T1 to complete it, this T2 has to wait for the uh, prior 10 minutes. Instead of that, if it is mixing this transaction with it, both T1 and T2, T3, all the three are executing parallelly. In order to do that, we require this concurrent execution of a transaction. So mainly it needs to be like uh, we are uh, executing a series of instructions or one at a time or execution of a same set of transaction. It has to be portrayed like that. But we are using this interleaving methodology to improve the concurrent usage of a application to get the result in as per the requirement of a customer. The transaction submitted by the various user may execute concurrently and may access and update the same database items. That means transaction submitted by the various users. So the transaction can be either reading of a content or writing a content to the database that is happening concurrently at a time everything is happening. So they may need to access and update the content of a same data item. So in order to do this we require a concurrent execution of a transaction and also if this concurrent execution is uncontrolled if you don't have a control over the concurrent execution of a system if I am letting all the T1, T2, T3 executing together and uh, if it is uh, there is no control over all the transaction then there will be no concurrency right so it may lead to the problem such as inconsistent database so t1 will going to get updated t2 will get deleted simply and t3 is getting inserted so there is no point of using a concurrency control if it is not able to manage the consistency in a database so in order to have a concurrent control it's a duty of this dbms also to maintain a consistency in the content of a database if you are not maintaining it properly or if the concurrent execution is in the uncontrolled manner then it will lead to the inconsistent database. If we have an inconsistent database then that may lead to the erroneous data that may be present in the database. So in order to have a standardization or to have a normalized form of data it is necessary to maintain a consistent data whatever we have in a database should be consistent if it is inconsistent in nature then it may not lead to the concurrency if there is no concurrency control all these things will going to happen so need to be very cautious when we are having this transaction processing system and also this DBMS is capable of handling concurrent execution and it is an important aspect of transaction management and is the subject of concurrency control. So when we are having all these concurrent execution of a system then it is a necessity or mandatory thing for the DBMS to maintain the transaction in a proper manner. So all the data whatever we have in a database should be consistent in nature then only we can able to achieve this concurrency control. So DBMS is also going to handle the partial transaction that means whether it is not uh, committed or if it is in the phase rate if it is stuck in between that is what partial transaction that needs to be either completed or should get failed but 
DBMS is also handled as the partial transaction or a transaction that are interrupted before they run to the normal completion. The transaction may get uh, aborted in between or the transaction may get failed, it may stuck in between. So all those of, of partial transaction but that can be handled by this DBMS whether it is committed or partially done or if it is aborted or failed whatever the state could be but this DBMS is also going to be able to handle all these kind of transaction and also mainly this DBMS ensures that the changes made by such partial transactions are not seen by other transaction and it is the subject of crash recovery. So remember here whatever the partial transaction has been done that should not reflect the content on another transaction if it is stuck in between if it is failed or committed if it is completely done then the transaction has to reflect in any other transaction. So, if it is partial in nature, that should not reflect on any other transaction. So, if it is, if does so, then it may lead to the crash. So, that recovering of a crash is also required. That means we won't get to know this has been partially done if it is not showcasing to any other transaction. And also, the main issues to deal with the failures of a various kinds. So, that uh, failures can be related to hardware failures or it may lead to the word system crash. So, at that time we require a crash recovery or else it may lead to the concurrency control is not in control or if it is out of control at that time concurrent execution of multiple transaction may need to have a concurrency control. The transaction issues can be with respect to hardware failures or it can be with respect to system crashes can happen and also this concurrency control is not under the control then that is also one of the big issues or a big deal in order to have a failure of a transactions in the DBMS or in the database management system. So here next we have a asset properties. So once we got to know what is transaction, what is transaction management system will do, then it is necessary to understand the properties of a transaction or a characteristics of a transaction that will going to be specified in the terms of asset. It's not related to chemistry here. So A represents the atomicity, C represents the consistency, I represents the isolation and D represents the durability. So already you know about each of the topic, what do you mean by atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Already we know about all these four properties. So if the transaction is following all these four properties, then we can say that the transaction or a DBMS, whatever we have is what? efficient as well as effective one. So there are four important properties of transaction that DBMS must ensure to maintain the data in case of concurrent access under system failures and that properties includes atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability mainly to in order to maintain a data in a concurrent access and the system failures in order to reduce the system failures the system or a DBMS has to include these four properties so that in under that we have a atomicity either the transaction should be completely done or should not do anything so it should not stuck in between if you are sending a money from your account to your friends or anybody's account then the amount has to reach them or should not initiate anything. The amount should not stuck in between and uh, it should not take so called 3 days working days right that is what atomicity in the sense should be done completely or should not get initiated at all and also we have a consistency so if some changes is taking place if committed is happening failed is happening then it has to maintain a consistent day, a state in a DBMS and also isolation. So if I am doing some changes through the T1 that should not affect the T2. T1 should not affect by T2 and should not affect the T2. That is what isolation. If I am sending money from my account to some recipient account, uh, amount has to be deducted from my account, not from my father account. So if I am doing my transaction with my own account, that is what isolation here and we also have a durability. So whether it is what the completed, failed, whatever it is, what are the transaction is happening should be saved or should be stored somewhere else called log files in order to keep on tracking of the transaction. Durability in the sense the transaction whatever we have made 
that should be stored somewhere in the log file then that is can be considered as what durability that is what we all have a uh, history in phone pay google pay in order to satisfy this so we also have atomicity there consistency is also there isolation along with the durability if all these four properties are uh, defining it properly in a database then we can say that this is what efficient one then what are the states we have in a transaction so if i'm considering a transaction then that transaction has to be in any one of these five states it can be active state partially committed state committed state aborted state and also we have a failed state so what is this active state it is just a what starting of the transaction you have started or you have ignited the transaction that is uh, we are initiating the transaction that is active state partially committed it is at the last stage of a transaction but i don't know whether it will going to be a failed one or a committed one or that means successful or unsuccessful i don't know it properly right now but i am at the end of a transaction i just need to click on submit button that is what partially committed and also we have a committed it's a successful transaction if a tra transaction is happening successfully then that is committed abort state also we have we have a failed state if it is a failed case or if it is failed state then it is what unsuccessful transaction but if it is aborted state then there will be a chance of roll backing the previous transaction where it got stuck or where the failure has been happened that is what aborted state okay so you just take the example of phone pay or google pay right now in order to make you understand this uh, phone pay you consider okay active state in this uh, sense what you are just opening a phone pay app then you are going to take a to mobile number you will be selecting and you are selecting some mobile number in order to send a message or a money after that you are just going to uh, select a bank and you have entered a money everything is over and the what uh, pin number is also given you need to give only proceed to pay so if i'm clicking on that whether it will going to be a successful transaction or some network issues that i don't know when i'm at the stage called proceeding to pay then that comes in a partially committed if i click on that and if i'm getting a noise called uh, like transaction completed that is committed stage so if it is failed that means uh, insufficient balance or uh, if it is due to some failures is happening there then it will be a failed state so if the pin number is incorrect then it will be a aborted state i can go back and i can come back again i can give that password again that is what aborted state there will be a roll back of a previous transaction can be takes place in the aborted but not in the failed failed in the sense unsuccessful that uh, done with a transaction so that transaction has to be in any one of this five state in its lifetime so here you can see that we have a active state here when it is in the active state it can be failed or it can be partially committed if it is partially committed there also can be some scenarios like it may be go to the committed state so at that time then it will going to store the data permanently if it is committed that is successful transaction it has to store the data whether it is committed or failed or aborted at last it has to reach to the terminate state fine so here again i'm starting a new transaction here if it is got failure or if the failure is occurring then it will reach to the failed state so if the failed state is happening directly it will come to the aborted state and then it will get terminated but if it is in the failed state if there are any chances of roll backing the previous content or at the state then aborted state can takes place so when it got aborted at the time there can be a chances of committed so when you roll back it and uh, when you are coming to the further transaction processing there can be a chances of reaching to the commit state again it will going to terminate that means whether it is failed or aborted or committed it has to terminate that means transaction should end from the active to that uh, terminate state along with that the operation can be either read or write operation whether i am reading the content from a database or i am giving a content to the database so out of that any of the operation can be takes place here so next we'll see about the transactions and schedules so we got to know transaction processing system and what do you mean by asset properties and also we have learned regarding the state of a transaction so now we'll see what do you mean by transaction along with a schedules or a 
scheduling mechanism. So here you can see that what do you mean by transaction here? It is a series or a list of action which is taking place in the DVMS and also that actions that can be executed by a transaction can be read and writes of the content to the database object and there will be one assumption whether I wanted to read or write a object of a database it has to be done through the database itself. So here you can see that we have a two assumption here transaction interact with each other only via database. If I have a transaction T1 and T2 so these are the two transactions. If any communication needs to be takes place between T1 and T2 then it has to take uh, with the help of this database itself. So here you can see that transaction interact with each other only via database read and write operation and they are not allowed to exchange the message. Simply I can't exchange a message from T1 to T2 or T2 to T1. So if any transaction need to take place then that has to be done with the help of this database or a DBMS only. So the action of a transaction T reading an object O then it will be denoted as what RT that means we are reading a transaction of an object and what if it is writing a content then it will become WT of O. So O specifies object, T specifies the transaction, W specifies the writing. So these are the two assumptions that we have when we are having a transaction and also each transaction must specify as it's a final action. Once the transaction is done, we have to specify whether it is committed or it is aborted. That means whether it rolled back or terminate the uh, or undo all the transaction which is uh, carried so far. That is what whether it needs to be either in the committed state or at the aborted state. It can't be stuck in between. So that final action needs to be specified. So here if it is about T that means T specifies the transaction here that denotes the action of T about T. If I am specifying commit T that specifies or denotes that the transaction T is commuting. So this is regarding transaction. Then what about schedules here or what do you mean by scheduling? So it is a list of action. That action can be what? Reading and writing or aborting or committing from a set of transaction. So when we have a list or a series of action of reading, writing, aborting and committing of a content on the database from a set of transaction, then we can call that as a schedule. Important definition. So mainly the schedule is also considered as a description of order of execution of operations of the transaction. This is what the definition. It is a description of order of execution of operations of transaction. Then what are the types of schedules we have? We have serial schedule or non-serial schedule. As the name indicate, if it is set of actions or set of uh, read and write operations are serial in nature. If it is taking one by one, then it will be serial. If it is interleaved or if it is mixing in between, then that is non-serial schedule. We'll have here, if the transaction or actions of different transactions are not interleaved, that means the order of execution transaction is sequential. So if it is not mixing, if it needs to be takes place one after another, then it can be considered as what? Serial schedule. So here you can see that we have a two transaction T1 and T2. R of A. I am reading an object called A. That is what R of A. And writing that object A. And again I am reading an object called C. Writing object called C. This is one set of transaction is happening. Once it is done, then only I can go with what? Reading of object B and writing of object B. So that means serial schedule involving two transaction that is T1 and T2. It is happening one by one. There is no interleaving in between. There is no mixing of transaction. It is taking place serially. That is why it's considered as what? Serial schedule. So here it needs to mention that basic assumption is each transaction preserves a database consistency. There must be a consistency in the data of a database. If there is no consistency then it may lead to the erroneous data in a database. So that the serial execution of a set of transaction preserves a database consistency. 
and also next we have a non serial schedule as the name indicate if it is non serial then there will be a interleaving interleaving in the sense mixing of transaction if i am reading at the same time writing can also be there if i am writing committing is also can be there that is what you can see here we are reading of a and i am performing some operations on object called a a minus 50 and we are writing a content of a in the same time i am reading a a again and we are working with temporary variable a and writing a content a again so here read b and adding of a content b with 50 and writing that content at the same time we are having this reading of or writing of that object called b that means it is taking place uh, parallelly so here operations are interleaved that means it is mixing up mixing of transaction from a multiple transaction if it does so it will be considered as what non-serial scheduling so in order to have a concurrency control we need to interleave the transaction so when we are doing it now we must be very cautious i hope you all understood it's all about today's session in our coming session we'll see about this concurrent execution of transaction and also we'll work on this serializability let me meet you in the next session until that keep learning keep on growing thank you